am I still wearing the same shirt? Yes. Have I left my house? No, it's still quarantine time. So today I wanted to talk about my April TBR. And by that I mean the list of books that I have written for myself. In no way am I going to attempt to read all of them because my brain doesn't function that way and it's entirely possible that I read only five of them. But the list of books that I've set aside that I am most interested in reading that are all yellow because in April we read yellow. As far as yellow is concerned, I have um, gone from like gold, like metallic gold, to like banana yellow, all the way up to like pale pale yellow, almost off-white, um, mostly because I don't have brown as one of my colors that I'm doing this year. So I needed to find a place to sort of fit in what could ostensibly be called tan. And I think the closest I'm going to get is a yellow. So again, we're going all the way from like metallic gold to sunshine yellow to like pale, pale, pale yellow, taupey, tannish colors. So I have a stack of my own physical yellow books here. And then I have a list of books that I don't own physically or have on hand at the moment and um, that I also want to read that I can borrow from the library and do whatever else. Folks who listen to LeVar Burton's podcast, LeVar Burton Reads, might uh, have heard of this guy. This is Wicked Wonders by Ellen Clages. Clages, I believe is how you pronounce her last name. He read one of the stories out of this collection two years ago, last year. Uh, um, it was one of my favorite stories that he's read on the podcast in general, like the entire podcast. So it was one that I definitely wanted to pick up the whole collection of. Um, it's a very pale yellow taupey color. Um, and I am excited about this. It's short stories, obviously, because LeVar Burton reads short stories. I believe it's all stories about people finding objects that have some sort of weird mystical powers. The story I've heard out of here that LeVar Burton has read is called Singing on a Star, where a young child, they have to be like five or six, like kindergarten, first grade, is invited over to her friend's house. Her friend has a record player. Um, when you play the record and open her closet, the closet becomes an old rickety style elevator that when you get in, it brings you to an entirely different world where she's introduced to a couple of characters and a couple of things. And uh, there's a twist at the end of the story that sort of happens throughout where you sort of get the feeling, not just because this child is so out of water and that she wasn't expecting this to happen, but also just a lot of the things that are going on are a little bit creepy and a little bit off and like doesn't seem as fun a place as her friend seems to think that it is. Yeah, I believe all of the stories are something along those lines of somebody being introduced to a magical object and how that magical object affects them. Um, I don't know if they're all like a parallel to, to a real world sort of instance thing and making sense of that sort of thing, um, but I'm excited to read more of these. One of the books I have already borrowed from the library and intend to read within the next two weeks is The Care and Feeding of Ravenously Hungry Girls by Anissa Gray. I honestly, when I was scrolling through books with yellow covers, I was like, that one's interesting. Um, I believe it's a family tale about uh, sisters. So there's three older sisters and then I believe teenage daughters as well. The eldest, the matriarch of the family, the eldest sister, gets arrested. The two younger sisters don't know why she's arrested and also now are in charge of her family where the teenage daughters come in. Um, I don't know much about it. Again, I picked it up from basically the cover and knew a little bit about the plot synopsis, um, but I'm excited about it. The, like, weird... <laughs> The weird almost horror image of multiple faces coming out of this, um, like, almost like side profile profile image is, is a little disturbing, but I like it. I'm into it. I want to know what that's about. <laughs> if you didn't know, I've been intermittently streaming on Twitch, and one of the things that I did was um, translate a couple 
uh, Pablo Neruda poems from Spanish into English. Um, it reminded me how much I really love Spanish literature and specifically Latin American literature, which I don't read enough of. Um, so I wanted to pick up both Roberto Bolaño's The Savage Detectives and um, Isabella Allende's The House of the Spirits. They're, this one's a little bit more taupey. This one's definitely a yellow. You get that. Um, but they're both a bit of a chunky read. I have a Isabel Allende's new book, The Long Petal of the Sea, behind me in both English and Spanish, but because the covers on those are like a bluish, tealy, greenish color, I'm not going to be reading those this month, but it's been a while since I've read an Allende, and I figured that picking up one of the older ones that I already had would be a good idea. I think I also have Ripper behind me somewhere, um, so that might be something that I pick up again. I really love her writing style. I believe that I this would be my first Bolaño, but I have heard really good things. Um, and obviously I've read books like a bunch of Jorge Luis Borges stories with Taylor. I have some Borges stories behind me in Spanish that I could possibly stream and talk about. Yeah, but these two are ones that are on my list to uh, get through, my backlist of like just things that I want to read and why not, they're yellow and now is the time. I think I probably own a copy of The Bees by Lillian Paul, but I don't have the cover that I'm going to show. I think the one that I have is like a dark blue cover, but obviously we're doing yellow books so I need a yellow cover. <laughs> obviously I'm not gonna like go and buy the correct color of everything, um, but as long as there is a cover that fits the color, it counts. So The Bees by Lillian Paul is one that has been on my list for a long time. Um, it's one that I've been wanting to read, especially because I've been reading a lot of fantasy that involves caste systems, um, one of which you'll see later in here, but the bees obviously being a complete imprint of our society over bee society <laughs> and how that works uh, as if humans were bees or bees were humans. So bees. I've had this guy since it won the Booker Prize, <laughs> uh, and I haven't read it. I do also own the audiobook. I think one of the reasons why I haven't picked it up is how worried I am about the language. I think if I both read it physically and listen to the audiobook at the same time, that will help me get through this guy because I can parse language better listening than I can reading sometimes. Sometimes hearing it back definitely makes it more comprehensible for me. Um, I don't know if that's true of everybody, but again, bright canary yellow. We got ourselves a bright yellow book that's been on my bookshelf for literal years. I need to read it, so it's on the TBR. I don't know if I'll get to it, but it's on the TBR. <laughs> I've never actually read the yellow wallpaper, which feels like in high school I was done a disservice. Um, I also obviously didn't read it during my English degree in college. Um, it's one of those foundational short stories slash novellas that I think a lot of people draw on when they're writing their own stories. And I feel like because I haven't read it, I'm missing a piece of the, like, core, real, important stuff, um, that is needed to draw connections between pieces of works um, and just noticing references and things like that. So um, I think I can borrow that from the library as well, get like a download of it or something and smash that out in one day. Easy read. Authority by Jeff Vandermeer, the second book in the Southern Reach trilogy. Did it, nailed it. Um, I read Annihilation years ago now, three years ago three years ago now. Um, I read that in one sitting and loved it. I saw the movie and loved it, although it's very different than the book is and some people were bothered by it. I think that the film did a great job of adapting the theme of the story to visual language. So the plot, plot quote unquote, isn't beat for beat the same. But the changes they made for the film, I think, are stronger in a visual medium 
than it would have been to beat by beat follow the book. So one of the rare instances where changing stuff from the book is important and is helpful and definitely something that needs to happen. Second book in the series, not going to talk about it itself, but um, it's a, if you haven't heard of Annihilation, Where Have You Been? Under a Rock, go read it. It's really weird stuff. It's some weird literature. Or if you're not into that and you're okay with horror movies, I'd watch Annihilation. It's really good. It's messed up, but it's really good. It's a good story and it makes you think about stuff. Um, if you don't want to watch the movie, but you still kind of want to understand what it is about, I would recommend Dan Foldable Human's video at Foldable Ideas, I think is his channel, but Foldable Human is his like tag on Twitter and stuff. Anyway, Dan's breakdown of Annihilation is great and also just a good read so definitely something to go think about but Authority, bright yellow book, second book in the series, book I need to read. Another book I have on my list, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I own it, I believe it's in my storage unit in many of the boxes but um, it's not one that I have on hand physically. I could get the audiobook wicked easily I'm sure. Um, I feel like I need to read it again so that I can talk about it. It's something that so many people have read that I have no frame of reference. I have watched the film, I believe the Swedish version, like this, the one that had subtitles, not the American version of it. So, um, yeah, I kind of know the story already, although it's been years since I've watched the film, and it's one of those ones that I feel like a lot of folks put up there, especially in the mystery genre, of like, this is a good mystery. Noisy truck. All of the trash trucks. <laughs> God dang it. Um, so that's one that I definitely want to get to. Obviously, that's another, like, popular one that I just want to have under my belt um, as an option of something to read. So, go with the dragon tattoo. Flights by Olga Tkarsik. That's how I'm going to go with the pronunciation that probably butchered it. This guy won the Man Booker International Prize. I am a big reader of translated fiction. I just haven't been talking about them a lot. I hadn't read this one. I picked up the book. I mean, I know it's going to be great. I won the Booker Prize. I'm sure it's going to be beautiful and amazing. Um, and... Uh, it's something that I just myself need to read. It's a bunch of interweaving stories that involve human bodies and travel. Um, I believe it was originally published in Polish. It's a Man Booker Prize winner. I know it's going to be great. So yeah, something I should pick up, have had on my shelves, need to read. Um, I also have a couple of the books from the short list of this year's International Prize one of which I believe is on the docket for next month, so it might be a good idea to read this one, especially because um, I just haven't been reading a lot of translated fiction and I miss that, so there you go. I might pick up The Help, which I have read already, but want to reread. Um, it's one of those movies that I will watch periodically. It's like on my list of movies that I cycle through and watch over and over and over again. Um, but I only read the book once and I feel like that was like back in high school. Like it's been a while. Um, so I want to read that one. I've got it listed as something I could possibly do. Again, it's another book I'm sure I could get from the library wicked easy because it's older and um, while popular, I don't think it's as popular and would have like a wicked long wait list. Granted, we don't know, it's quarantine times, a lot more people are using their library uh, e-resources than were previously using them. So, we'll see. Another second in a series, I have Golden Sun, which is the second in the Red Rising trilogy. I read Red Rising last month, technically. I started it in February, but I finished it last month. Um, this was a highly recommended series from one of my coworkers when I worked at Barnes & Noble, and I had it on back burner for a long time, picked it up because I could get the audiobook easily, listened to it, loved it, wanted to dive right into the second one. Lucky for me, <laughs> I read it last month and now I can read the yellow one this month. So Golden Sun also 
I think uh, one of the pop sugar reading challenges for this year is read a book with gold in the title. So double dipping. Um, I'm not going to talk about this book in particular again because it's the second in a series, but Red Rising is about um, people who live on Mars in a caste system and their caste is based on colors where reds are the very bottom and golds are the very elites. And uh, as often happens in caste system stories, the reds are <laughs> basically slaves. And uh, a red tries to infiltrate the golds. Let's go with that. So that was the start of the series. This is the second in it. And uh, I'm going to see how I feel about it. I swear to God I had a copy of this book physically here, but I cannot find it for the life of me, and I don't know what I did with it. But The Great Believers by Rebecca Mackay, I think it's, or McKay, Rebecca Mackay. Uh, she actually came and spoke at the New Voices Literary Festival in Ithaca, I think the first year that it was there when I was in college. So I have a copy of her book librarian something like that along those lines um signed by her so it was before she had published this one um for folks who may not know um my dad's are gay the story involves the aids crisis and the gay community i'm interested to see her take on it um just as someone who is not within the community but tangential to the community I guess. I'm not part of it but I'm related to it and understand it in a way that not everybody has the same privilege of doing. So yeah that one's definitely one that I think that one's like at the top of my list right now. It's like one of the ones that I definitely want to read this month for sure. Um, the last book on this list that I have it's the second in the Murderbot series. <laughs> this one's Artificial Control. Art artificial Control? Yes. Um, Murderbots are a wicked short and sweet if you like funny, dry wit stories. Murderbot's good for you. Uh, Murderbot is an artificial intelligence android robot thing that is supposed to be a security robot. Murderbot. That's what it calls itself. It's what it feels like it is. But it also likes to watch TV. And some of the humans that it's working with realize that it's a person. Or what it is to be a person. Um, so, yeah. Robots. Uh, I believe another Pop Sugar challenge is to read a book with a robot or AI as the one of the main characters. And there you go. Our official control. Gonna pick that one up. This one's wicked short. I, again, can blast through this in like a day. So it's definitely something that I should put more time into. <laughs> that was a lot of books that I have on my list. And there are more books on my list, but again, I'm not planning to read all of these, especially because we are now in week two, and I still have yet to finish my two orange books that are huge. Part of it is I haven't been reading the last five days in a row. I haven't read anything at all. So I need to get back into reading. Um, part of it is that my flow is messed up. Um, but I have all the time now, so why am I not reading? All of the time. I've been watching YouTube videos and um, playing video games. That's what I've been doing. Animal Crossing has absorbed me. I am absorbed. I should listen to audiobooks while playing Animal Crossing. That's my plan for today. I'm going to play some Animal Crossing, but I'm going to listen to audiobooks while I do it. That way I get things done. I figured it out. I've solved the problems. I hope you guys are having lovely weeks and good health days. And uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Oh, if you didn't see, Gretchen posted an update as well. So go watch Gretchen's video. And uh, hopefully we can, especially during quarantine times, make some content for you, get the jitters out, get out of our heads a little bit. And uh, yeah, talk to you again soon. Bye.